welcome to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Devin. I am Dan. The, <laughs> the <fish>. <laughs> and this week we're talking about Umbrella Academy. Out on Netflix now. Yes, but first, did you like anything this week? <laughs> yeah, I got a few things. Uh, I saw Captain Marvel. Me too. Yeah. And I gotta say, it was an enjoyable, like, one-shot, like, almost like an issue one-shot of a comic introing a character. It was fine. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. It wasn't the best Marvel movie. It wasn't the worst. Yeah, I liked a lot about it. Mostly the comic book, or comic, the costuming and the effects were spectacular. I feel like that part has gotten way better. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I didn't like everything about the cat. I'm a hater. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Brie Larson. Mm. I found her a little bit smug. In the in the ship. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about her personally. She's probably a lovely person. Yeah, but in the movie. In the movie, I just found, like, she wasn't cocky. She was smug, and that's just... That's just a meh. I have two main things. One, I really liked her interactions with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, they were he great. was great. He was great. And then two... They kind of wrote the story wrong in that we know her backstory before she does because she has amnesia. And then that kind of like lessens the tension. Like you're like, I already know. <laughs> yeah, they didn't bother me as much. I was just like, let's punish through another plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the next thing, I really wanted to give a shout out. I uh, did another watch through of Blade Runner 2049. Nice. No one's seen it. See it. Hey, on a side note, have you seen Allie's flash for that? The, the blue-haired lady, like, with the blank bangs. She does some cool... Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I must have seen it, but it's... That's uh, your not, next tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Not, not uh, really getting it in there. And then the last thing, the Weezer Black Album from 2017. Gave oh, it nice. a good listen through. It was really enjoyable, actually. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were talking about when we went for Suchi the other day, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Haha, <laughs> it wasn't someone else. That's right. Good. And so, yeah. The, That's it? That was some things, yeah. Cool. So I have three things that I like this week and one thing that I don't like this yeah. week. So um, I watched, on Netflix, I watched The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is based off the Sabrina the Teenage Witch, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a lot better. So it exists in the same universe as Riverdale, but it's a strictly Netflix show, whereas Riverdale is a CW show that Netflix shows at the same time. Right, they must fund it or something. Or yeah. Um, and I thought that Sabrina was much more interesting than Netflix. It's kind of dark. It kind of was silly. Right. It had cool costumes. <laughs> lots of demon heads. I liked it. Nice. The second season comes out April 5th. Ah, that wow, was, that's really soon. Yeah. The next thing I like, I started listening to a new podcast called... The Daily, it's put out by the New York Times, Mm. and every day it's like a 20 minute to half hour episode that kind of deep dives into a current day topic. So they have a couple of good ones on the Mueller Report. I know this isn't, we're not getting political. (laughs) It's more like, it just helps me understand what's going on better so that when people talk about it, I know what people are talking about. Sure. Um... They did get a, a good one about uh, the college admission scam and right, all that. Right. So it's a bunch of different things. It's not just political. Yeah. But they break it down in a really easy to understand way, mm-hmm. which I appreciate because sometimes it's like you're either getting comedy or you're getting stuff that's a little bit too deep into it for me to right. fully grasp it. So um, I recommend that. Cool. I also started watching a YouTube channel called TLDR News, Mm. um, specifically because they are breaking down everything about Brexit, and I know I said this is not a political thing, (laughs) but I find Brexit extremely interesting and strange, and it just seems like a train wreck that's in a dumpster fire. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the two uh, last week week tonight episodes that he might have done another one by I now. think he's done three yeah I was say, but I, I've seen like two I think of them and they're really good this channel it's crazy <laughs> yeah this channel like it, it breaks down what happens every day they oh, put yeah. out daily videos um like today was um we record this before it's released but today was about the indicative <laughs> vote and yeah. kind of what that meant and how every so the indicative vote I'm go, I'll be quick was to give <laughs> They're Brexiting. They're yeah. leaving the EU. 
Theresa May yeah. made a deal, proposed a deal. Nobody in Parliament likes it. I know, yeah. So they did the indicative vote to find a different option. Mm. They presented eight options. <laughs> All of them got voted as no. Nice. <laughs> That's a summary of that video. Yeah, yeah. It's so bizarre. It's so strange. And I just, I don't know, I'm like very um, into it right yeah. now. Okay, fair enough. And then for the thing that I did not like, I watched Michael Moore's newest documentary, Fahrenheit 11.9. Oh, I thought he might have had another one after that one. No, no, 9-11. No, no, I know, but uh, I know because he released that one last year, right? No, Fahrenheit 11.9 just got released. Oh, really? No. Oh. Like, this month, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's Michael Moore turned up to 11. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a documentary. It's two hours of him telling you what he thinks. Sure. And <laughs> that's fine if you have, if you're like... A news pundit, you have your own show. Yeah. That's okay. But calling it a documentary irks me a little bit because it's not documenting anything. It's just right. him being like, these are the s- stories that I've handpicked that support my theory. <laughs> and then the other thing I didn't really like about it was that <laughs> he was like really down on Obama and then saying that Hillary Clinton would have been so much better was kind of the impression I got but I'm like I don't know that that's true or not true it also didn't happen so it didn't happen (laughs) and like Hillary Clinton has a bunch of scandals surrounding her sure as does she's a longtime politician yeah every politician does right so you can't really be like oh she would have been perfect and Obama sucked right like you can't do that he makes the case that Obama paved the way for Trump which is like it's partially true, actually. Yeah, like... Not I, Obama, like, not his actions, but just other things. But Because I've read uh, interesting data analysis about Trump's voting and stuff like that. But yeah, but it's like... It's a whole other show. <laughs> it's a whole other show, yeah. but it just... You didn't. You never once says the Obama administration. Oh really? It just just like Obama. it makes it sound like it's just Obama, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like him yeah. going up to people and be like, "Vote Trump." Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, there was one more part. Also, I'm trying to be brief. There was one more part that really bothered me, where he put a Trump speech over. Hitler's mouth moving. Nice. I was and about to say Nazi footage, and I hadn't even seen this, and I was right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, that's so heavy-handed. Mm. That's if, unnecessary. If, if you are concerned with not dividing the United States more than they're already divided, I don't think that's the right way to go about it. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so for the five people in Canada who have Prime Video, right. don't watch. <laughs> That's it. The end of red. Goodbye. Julio. So yeah. moving on to the Umbrella Academy. Yes. Out on Netflix now. When did this even come out? Like literally like a month ago? Yeah, a month or two ago. Yeah. Because I hadn't heard of it. I, I believe it came out either late February, early March right. 2019. Cool. I got it recommended from my parents. Oh. My parents had it recommended from Sean. Okay. She really liked it. Yeah. yeah. No, the, the audience doesn't know who shot it. That's fine, that's fine. So it was 10 episodes. Yes. And the basic premise is there is these, all these kids, 43 of them, I believe, born around the world at the same time, at the same day, from yes. women that weren't pregnant. Yes. And then this eccentric billionaire manages to adopt seven of them, turns yes. them into a superhero team. Pause. It's based off a graphic novel by the lead man from My Chemical Romance. Yeah, I got his name down. Here. Gerard Way. Yes, and Gabriel Ba. Yes. Oh, yeah, I guess somebody else did it. Too. Somebody else did some of those stuff. But also, I don't, well, I would say it, it was like a, a released issue. It wasn't necessarily a graphic novel. No, oh, I have no idea. Yeah. There were six issues in the first uh, Apocalypse Suite, which is what this season oh, is based off of, which I assume, because it's okay. called the Apocalypse Suite. <laughs> Fair. And then, yeah, because the premise is they're a superhero team, but now it's years later, they're grown up, all broken up, and all dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. And then their billionaire dad dies, so they come back to figure out what the hell. <laughs> Six of them have powers, one of them does not. Yeah, except for if you know comic book story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because, well, I don't know. I assume we don't want to get into anything too spoilerish to start. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yes. 
Yeah? I did. did I, you, what, what was the standout for you? So, I didn't think it was mind-blowingly new. Yeah. I didn't think it was the best writing on the face of the planet. <laughs> But there was a lot of characters that I was really interested in and that I enjoyed anytime they were on screen and that I wanted to know more about. Yeah. yeah. And there was also a little bit, there's a monkey butler yeah. and a robot mom. Yeah. And both of those things kind of have like interesting, I, this is going to sound weird when I say it, but like interesting false nostalgia. Like it seems right. like something that should have been in a kid's show when I was growing up, but it wasn't. Right. Well, and also the mom is stuck in, like, some sort of 50s housewife, housewife yeah. like, is it nanny role. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's 20 years later or whatever. I also thought that um, the sets were really cool. Like, yeah. the house that they grew up in, uh, Vanya's apartment was very cool. Yeah. Uh, even, like, later on when they go to the hunting cottage. Mm-hmm. That was all very cool, like, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't find anything particularly wrong with the cinematography or the special <laughs> effects. Yeah, that's fair. But it was very much character driven for me. Yeah. And um, that's why I enjoyed it. Did you enjoy cool. it? Yeah, I did. No, and you hated it. No, no. I, <laughs> Don't lie, Dan. No, I, I really did enjoy it. And I think uh, echoing a lot what Devin was saying that a lot of the ideas. I've seen before, mm-hmm. and a lot of the story beats I've seen before, but I think, yeah, like, the either it was the way it was written, or the character, or the actor playing certain roles that were just, like, I'm not elevating the material, but, like, either giving it a new twist, or just, like, their take on it I really did enjoy, and, like you said, the, the monkey butler thing is hilarious, Pogo, his name is, yes. he's an ape, not a monkey, I guess, oh, sorry. but he is literally wearing a suit, and I was just, like... Does anyone in the outside world know that he he Jesus. had a monkey or an ape butler? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, yeah. Uh, but I really liked uh, Ellen Page. I yeah, Ellen Page as Vanya. Great. As Vanya, yeah. She's very good at being despondent. Well, and I would say, <laughs> and not to get too spoilerish, but when her character changes, yeah. you can almost see the change on screen. Like the way she just walks and carries herself. Sure. Suddenly, it's like it's far different. And I was like, "Good job, Ellen Page. Good performance." This is a side note, but do you think Ellen Page dictated what her wardrobe? Because uh, I know it's so hilarious. She's wearing like this, like I don't know, not frumpy, but it's just like oversized jeanish well, shirt because- <laughs> most of the time. And- Ellen Page is a lesbian yeah. and she's been kind of outspoken about like women's role in Hollywood and right. not sexualizing female characters and stuff like that mm-hmm. and so I just I wondered if she was like listen I'll do it but yeah, I'm not wearing anything tight you can't yeah. put me in a dress and you know because she does wear pants and a shirt most she just wears pants and a shirt that's, yeah. yeah that's what I was like curious if maybe which you know what it worked with the character. That's what I was so saying. So I have no no beef with it. Yeah. But that's what I was wondering. No, I thought it worked with the character as well because she was just trying to be unobtrusive. In yeah, life, she wanted always. to fade in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that's what she was told since she was a child. Yeah. So, yeah, and I thought it was neat because uh, I they do the one scene in the first episode where they show like them on an adventure as kids. Yes. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I thought that was going to be kind of it, but they definitely do flashback more than I was expecting to some of their childhood incidents. And I was like, oh, okay. But then it's also like, I was like that could have been its own thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I would have watched a show about that with kids fighting crime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like it could have been its own thing. Uh, but it was, I don't know, it worked for this story because we're seeing all the effects years later. Because yeah. we usually see that kind of thing. Because this is, again, not a new idea, but it's like, they're grown up, they're dysfunctional. The one character, Klaus, is messed up from his powers. Oh, and he's so good. He was probably my standout favorite. Yeah, uh, Klaus in Five. Yeah. F- F- five was great, too. Yeah, Klaus's name is, where is it here? Robert Sheehan. Yeah, he was an excellent actor. He was did really a really good. good job. Yeah. Excellent wardrobe for yeah, Klaus. Exactly, yeah. I, I appreciated the kind of gender-fluid... Yeah. Like, wardrobe choices. Like, he wears a leather skirt. Yeah, he wears skirt. a leather skirt for, like, the first episode yeah. or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I think there's an episode where he's wearing, like, like a lime green and purple yeah. snow type thing or underwear. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, number five was Aiden Gallagher was his name. He was apparently been in everything. You should just Google him. He was, like, the child 
or the youth UN <laughs> ambassador for climate change and all like in real life he's yeah, like yeah. an insane he's accomplished more than it either of us will ever <laughs> accomplish combined. Well, and then, so the premise is, uh, like I we was saying, they come back to the funeral. Five and Ben, who's number six, have been dead for years. They're at the funeral. Five isn't dead, he's just missing. He's been missing, yeah. Well, they are presumed dead. Yeah, but they know that, what, Ben Ben's dead, dead. yeah. Uh, and then Five, a temporal vortex appears. Five comes jumping out of it. He's still a kid. Yeah. And he's like, the world's going to end. <laughs> I've seen it. Because <laughs> it turns out he didn't go missing. He jumped forward in time. Yes. And then they have to figure it out. And that's the story. <laughs> and it's very good. Yeah, very good. Um, I guess we should talk about... Um, uh, fuck you, spoilers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, aggressive. <laughs> um... I guess we should talk about the other siblings. Yeah, we can mention them all, of course. Yeah, so there's the number one's name is... Tom Hooper for, as Luther. Luther, Luther. Yeah, yeah. Luther. And he is big guy. Yeah, he has, like, super strength, and then when he gets injured in a past mission, his dad has to use a serum that gives him, like, the upper body of an ape, essentially. Yeah. And he's been on the moon for the past four years. Yes, he has. And he's all like, it's for a reason. And it turns out, nope. No, <laughs> Which I thought was a great twist. Yeah. <laughs> like, I saw, I, I figured that was coming, but then when he finds out, it's actually, like, it works in the show. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Which that episode I have a lot of notes about, because was, those two episodes were really good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's number two, which is David Castaneda, which is Diego. Oh, I liked him a lot. He was knifey knife. Yeah, he was. He, could... he was really good at throwing knives. Yeah, he well, he could curve anything he throws, so he mostly throws knives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was his power. I liked his arc. He had a little romantic interest with a police officer who yeah. dies, and he gets Patch. framed for it. Yeah. Um, and he's got, like, an extra special relationship with their mom. Not in a weird way, but in a, like, he was the only one that seemed to really bond Yeah, with he was her. the only one who was, like, still, like, emotionally attached. The yeah. others are like, oh, she's our mom, blah, blah, blah. But he was like, she's my mom, <laughs> right? Yeah. Helped yeah. him, like, you see some flashbacks where she helped him learn to speak better and stuff he like that. stutter and Stutter stuff. and yeah. everything like that. So, yeah, he was really... And that was weird. Well, I guess I could bring that up later. Or we're still talking about right now? No, no, we're still talking siblings. We can come back to it. Okay. Uh, the number three is who? That's Emmy River Lapman as Allison. Who could... Who could tell... She, her power, change reality, essentially. She, she would say, I heard a rumor about you, and then it would come true. Yeah, she could say, like, so she... In the sample scene, she's in... There's a bank robber, so she's like, oh, I heard a rumor you shot your friend in the foot. And then yeah. he got, turns around and shoots his friend in the foot. Which I was like, whoa, harsh. That's a cool power. It is. Um, I kind of found her mostly bland. Maybe in the beginning. I thought she... she, she yeah, as her... I as, guess as, as it went on, it got better. As her relationship with Vanya kind of intensified, it yeah. got better. Yeah. There's and then more more when she's breaking down, realizing that like she's used her power like her whole life to just get everything. <laughs> yeah. So here's a little thing that I want to bring up quickly. Okay. Now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she's the only one who has a family and outside of yeah, the she, family. She has a husband and child. Well, ex-husband and right, and ex-husband child. and child, yes. And it's revealed slowly that they got divorced because she used her power on her kid. Yeah. So here I am. <laughs> Being me, expecting <laughs> that the child got hurt or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I thought the initial implication was as well. But I was she like, just oh, told her kid happened. to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> if it put her, if it, I would use that all the time. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't know if that makes me evil at hurt. But like, if I had a cranky kid that would yeah. go to sleep, I'd be like, I heard a rumor that you're sleepy. Yeah. I mean, if that made her kid go into a coma for like six weeks. Yeah, that could have been the implication. It was like she did that and then the child didn't ever, yeah, didn't wake up for like a little Yeah. Moment. It's like, oh shit. That would have been like terrifying and that yeah. would have been a wake up call. But just mm-hmm. having her husband over here being like, I remember that you're sleepy. Yeah. If I was her husband, I'd be like, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you could put her kid to bed on command. <laughs> she can eat her vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's what she she t- she says that about how she used her power for like so many minor things on her child. <laughs> and I guess they they imply kind of that she used it on, on her husband, husband yeah. to make him fall in love with her. So. Yes. <laughs> but like, if he caught her doing that or like yeah. had figured that out, that would have been different too. But I don't know. I just didn't think that was a big deal. Hmm. 
I would have used that. Like, there was no tomorrow. Maybe there was a previous incident, and then she was like, oh, I'll never do it again, or whatever, and then, I just know. didn't think... I think yeah. it was kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be great. I would use it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, that's her power, is that she can alter people's minds and reality, essentially, by doing yeah. that. Then we have uh, Klaus, who we've mentioned. It's number four. So number he four. Can talk to the dead and yeah. see the dead. And see the dead. And he has a very bad drug and alcohol problem because of it. Yeah, it keeps the dead away, essentially. Which yeah. I know that idea. I'm sure I've seen that before. I think um, I have too, but I like the way that they did it in this one. That's what I was going to say. I liked really the implications and the implementation of it. And uh, like the scene where he's being tortured by Cha Cha and Hazel, and then eventually like more dead people are showing yeah. up and he uses the knowledge. I thought the coolest idea, and it wasn't really explored. But maybe because he... But it was when he went to Nam and he traveled back in time. I was like, could you imagine a guy who can talk to the dead in Vietnam? I was oh like, my God. that'd be its own hell. But I assume he probably just did a bunch of drugs and <laughs> he was or fine. something. Or, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He couldn't talk to the dead because time travel. Maybe. Because I was like, he would be insane. <laughs> um, yeah. It's also the trauma of dealing with the fact that his dad locked him in a crib. <laughs> a crib with dead people. A kid. Yeah. <laughs> And it's also revealed in the first episode that even though Ben's dead, he can see Ben. Yes. Still. And uh, Ben talks to him and they still interact. He's not just like a, a non-interactive dead person. Oh, yeah. No, he's like his buddy. Yeah. Buddy basically, cop. he's the buddy cop. Because I love that in the, in the first... He's in the car and he's like, let's go for some waffles. And he's like, no, man. He's like, oh, man, we're going to have to deal with frozen waffles again. He's talking to <laughs> his brother. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> not to the brother in the car. <laughs> Which I thought was a great scene. Yeah. And then you got number five. Which is number five. If he's number five. He never has another name. No, his name is five. Yeah, his name is five. So I don't know if he just refused something that mom tried to give him or... Because it's revealed the robot mom named, named all the kids. Yeah. Not the dad. He still called them by their numbers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and number five can teleport. teleport. Yeah. And eventually time travel. And eventually time travel. Yeah. And then he time travels to the future, ages... Joins up with a commission, which we'll get to and everything. Yeah. Then when he time travels back, he's back to being a kid, but he's a 58-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, he did such a good job of playing a 58-year-old kid. Yeah, it was like, really good. It wasn't pretentious. <laughs> it wasn't annoying. It was just like, oh, that's a 58-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, man, are you sure you could drive? He's like, I know how to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Like he's like, yeah, he's a 60-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, the, the actor was great. The character was pretty... Because it was... He's it, kind of an asshole, but I like him. That's what I was saying. He's like a dickish asshole, but it's because he's got like a zealot goal. He's like, I'm trying to stop the apocalypse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And everyone else is like, are you sure it's even going to happen? He's like, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I lived it. <laughs> and he has his mannequin girlfriend, Dolores. His mannequin girlfriend, Dolores. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then that brings us to number six, which is Ben. Which is Ben, who's dead. He who's was dead. He's and a he horror. <laughs> had a power where... I don't know. They describe, it, come out of? they describe it here. He possessed monsters from another dimension under his skin. Huh. Which kind of works because it's like in the, the kid scene, you just see tentacles and yeah. blood everywhere. <laughs> and at the end, he... Uh, also tentacles. It, also, he opens Ghost the tentacles. <laughs> and tentacles come out and start attacking everybody. Does it mention how he died? No. Okay. I assume on a mission. But... It was just something that said something like the darkness within or something. Yeah. So his... I don't know if the monsters killed him. Yeah, it could have been something like that. Yeah, because yeah, the plaque on his his uh, gravestone said, yeah, like, may you re- rest from the monsters within or from the darkness within or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, I thought maybe they could have done something like that. Maybe it's revealed in uh, further comics then. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to do a second season. Yeah. No doubt. Um, um, so that brings us to number seven, which is Vanya. Vanya Hargraves. Played by Ellen Page. Played by Ellen Page. She, she doesn't have a power, plays the violin. <laughs> yeah. Mediocrely. No, yeah. she plays it she, well. She's third chair. Third chair, not first chair. <laughs> not first chair in the, in the, in the symphony. <laughs> and she teaches violin. Yeah. And she seems to very, live a very solid... Terry life. Yeah, and here's the thing. As soon as I saw Vanya, and I was like, okay, and then as soon as she popped her first pill, I was like, oh, oh she has godlike powers and they're keeping it suppressed. Boom, and she causes the apocalypse. And then that was essentially revealed in episode two when he they show five tribe travel and he finds all his siblings in a broken house in the broken academy. She's not there. And I was like, yeah, she causes the apocalypse. 
<laughs> oh, I don't know if I caught on to it that fast. It was it was immediate for me. <laughs> and I was like... You know what I thought? No, I didn't get in the same page as you, but yeah. I was on a different page of comic book tropes. Oh, okay. Because I was like, oh... Her power is that she inspires everybody else. Ah. That's what I thought it was. She's got some bardic powers going? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, she's heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but... Um, I'm glad we didn't go that route, though. Sure. It, well, yeah, she, she's told from an early child, and we see even in the flashbacks, she's like, you have no powers, you're ordinary. Yeah. You're nobody. You don't get to go on field trips. Yeah, you don't get to play with the other kids, they'll hurt you. Although, I was kind of, I just assumed they all had some kind of low-level super strength because when she gets hit in the head by a mace, by Hazel, yeah. and she's just like, oh, I'm cut. I was like, no, your head should be crushed. <laughs> I thought you didn't just, maybe I blinked, maybe I was on my phone, I don't know. I just didn't, like, thought you didn't hit her that hard or something. It's still a ball of metal on a chain. <laughs> like... Yeah, I must have not paid attention. And to her. Hazel and Chacha are depicted as being pretty strong. I love Hazel and Chacha. Should yeah. we talk about them? Uh, yeah, I guess we can get to or them. Keep but... talking about Vanya. Well, 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 we can get back to Vanya. Anywho, point of the story is she does have powers, and it's pretty cool. We'll get to it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it was a cool power. Yeah, it was different than I was expecting. I wasn't sure how they were gonna put, kind of play it, but I was like, oh, that was. That was cool. I thought it was gonna be power friendship. <laughs> so uh, okay, so Hazel and Vanya. No, Hazel and Cha Cha. Yeah. Um, it's Mary J. Blige and Cameron Britton as Hazel. Yes, he was great. Yeah, he Mary was. J. Blige was good too. Sure, sure. Don't was. get me wrong, but he was a standout for me. The only thing about Mary J. Blige is her jacket, the clasps. Every time, it's all I could see was just I was like corset, corset, yeah. or you can buy those clasps. <laughs> <laughs> just to, it gives it like a neat old world charm, I guess, with her jacket. <laughs> it made it unique. Yes. But. Because Hazel's just wearing like a suit jacket. <laughs> but like, you and I have yeah. more cor- more costume knowledge than most people. Sure, I guess. But anyway. Um, yeah, so they're. Hazel, yeah. They're on the. They're getting for five. They're trying to kill five. Yeah, they work for the commission, and they've been sent back in time to kill five. To make sure that the apocalypse does happen. Yes. Because um, in the first episode, there's some... This was kind of weird. They're like, oh, we they hired some locals to attack him. Oh, yeah. And then they just get annihilated immediately. And I was like, that was a cool scene. Yeah. And then they're like, okay. And then they send the time-traveling bounty hunters. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so... Hazel was a standout. He was really... In- like, my top characters that I was interested in was, like, Klaus, Klaus Five, Hazel, and Five's boss, the lady. The commission lady? Yeah. Uh, Handler, I believe it was. Yeah, she was cool. Mm. Uh, but Hazel kind of has this really cute side love story with the, like, oh, no, with somebody that works at a donut shop. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's either positive that she's the owner... Or not, because at the end when she's like, oh, we're, we, I closed the shop, and I was like, so is she the owner? Her name's uh, Sheila McCarthy, by the way, as Agnes. I don't know if she owned it or not, but it doesn't I, I really was, matter. I just assume she was the owner. Anyway, I think she is. I yeah. think you're right, yeah. She runs the, the local donut shop. <laughs> yeah, and they have this cute romance that kind of blossoms over several episodes. Yeah, it, it, I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> well, I think part of it is that she... Appears older than him. Yes. And in most Hollywood and TV shows, um, it's usually the other way. Mm-hmm. It's like an older dude, younger yeah. girl. Uh, but I just, I wrote it off as we don't know how old Hazel is. That's what I was just about to say. We don't know how long he's been jumping through time and he's yeah. probably lived so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so was, I don't know. It's a cute little story. It yeah. made Hazel kind of. Well, it motivates him to, to turn good. Yeah, then. he's just like, you know what? I'm done with this life. <laughs> yeah, just... he's like, I don't want the apocalypse. I just want to live my life with Agnes. Yeah. And it's cute. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't know. No. He just was a very charming character. He was. Well, and I liked in the beginning, especially, he was so, like, hard about everything. And yeah. And just kind of, like, as the show goes on, he kind of softens a little more. Like you say, as the love blossoms. But he was always... People would be like, give him an answer. And he's like, yeah, elaborate how. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so... But it was because I always figured that they had some kind of super strength as well, or something like that. Because when he fights against Luther, and they're both going just toe to toe to each other and just beating the heck out of each yeah. other, and like they get up and they're fine. And I was just like, you know, they're supposed to be comic booky. Not everybody could take a punch like that, <laughs> right? I think I think they do have some super strength, and I also think mm-hmm. that their helmets, their yeah, their, their masks helmets. are helmets. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, the metal helmet, uh, or the, well, the rubber that they turn them on and they're metal. Cause yeah, they're metal, yeah. Just punch it, but yeah, I just, like I said, I figured that they were enhanced in some way because of the things and the fights that they were able to do and not be dead yeah. <laughs> immediately. No, nope, I agree. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, uh, Cha-Cha gets knifed and then Hazel, yeah, goes to toe, toe-to-toe with Luther and they both, like, beat the heck out of each other. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, let's see what else was there. There was, of course, Pogo. Pogo, and, Mom. And uh, Call... Calm Fio, uh, four. I always forget how to pronounce his name. He was Reginald Hargraves. He's a local, like he's a Canadian actor. You've seen him in like everything. Yeah, yeah. he was great. He was really good as he, a dad. Yeah, he did it really well. Yeah, uh, especially the scene where it's Vanya and the glasses of water. Yeah, and that like switch when he realizes that she's way more powerful than he thought he like yeah. he just acts up so well. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I really like him, and he was he was great as their dad. I. Uh, Oh, and then there's Vanya's boyfriend. I guess we should talk about him since yeah. he's a big part of the plot. I got his name here. John Magaro. Leonard Peabody slash Harold Jenkins. So, Which, okay. Oh, I hate him so much. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of hatred. I thought, I, okay, here's something. Because I thought the show makes a big point that there was 43 kids. Yeah. And I was like, where are the rest of the kids? So I thought he was like a kid who had powers too, but it was never... I'm I thinking like, season two through seven. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, okay, what's his deal? And then I thought maybe he did have something that he could do with like figurines. Like when he carved something, he could do some kind of power. Mm-hmm. Like that's actually a prediction I wrote down. Yeah. But then literally the next episode, we get how he was just born on the same day and he had an abusive dad. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got no powers. And that, I was fine. But then, yeah, he's like, his dad's abusive and he looks up to the umbrella. Academy gets humiliated by them and then murders his dad. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, God damn, dude. <laughs> so I figured that he, like, up until that episode, I figured that he had worked for the like, commission. Mm. I thought he was like an undercover. Right. Yeah. I figured he, like, immediately I uh, knew he was. I was like, oh, he's not just a normal guy. Of course. So, like I said, I thought maybe he had powers, or mm-hmm. and then he knew. And then it turns out it is, he, he has revealed that he found Hargrave's notes, and so he knew that Vanya had powers. Yeah. I was like, I figured he knew somehow he had to get out of prison, like, right at the same time that they threw the notebook out. It was pretty close, because okay. they show that flashback scene where it's like, it was like a week before, or two weeks before yeah. he got out, and then he was just there when Klaus was throwing this stuff in the trash. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, yeah, when Klaus was throwing the stuff in the oh, trash. Oh, you know, we could write that off as a commission made him be there. The yeah, maybe. Events yeah. To make sure he was there because they knew that he was. Yeah. Okay. They manipulated some things to get yeah. him there. Yeah. Uh, well, and I assumed because he was probably going there to either like confront Hargraves in some way, but then he found out he was dead, so he was just like, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. Like I assumed he was in jail, being like, I will get revenge, which is his whole plan is yeah. to get revenge. <laughs> and then he kind of does. Yeah, okay. he, he, using Vanya as a tool for revenge. Yeah. So you hated him? Just. I. You know what? Before even it was revealed that like, he did anything evil, I just hated him. Fair I enough. just, like, he's such a fucking little weasel. Yeah. <laughs> he's after something. Sure. Like, he just didn't, there was no part of him that I liked. Yeah. I was very much on the same page with Allison. Yeah, who like, she's like, she's, he's, get away from him. <laughs> yeah. He's bad news. <laughs> yeah, basically right away she's like, he's bad news, or at least, hey, you should look into him a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just like, oh, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't a good guy. No. He just rubbed me the wrong way. He, he reminded me of like, you've never experienced this because you're a boy. Yeah. But he reminded me of those guys that are like, <laughs> I guess, like, nice, nice, yeah, yeah. slash, nice guys. Or like, <laughs> quote marks? <laughs> yeah, nice guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, there is one dude that I knew in high school, <laughs> and we went for a hike one day, and then he was like, I don't know, he said that if, if a song was going to represent me, it was, like, this really stupid Avril Lavigne song, because that's <laughs> how old I am. Like, whenever, it's a style of time. <laughs> whenever a first song. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and I was like, why would you think that? Because it was a sad song, and he's like, because I can just see the pain and sadness in your eyes. So I was like, oh, I don't want to be on a hike with you. <laughs> it just, he reminded me of that. Right. It's just, just gross. It makes you want to, like... Well, and I guess that was the point. Is I knew it was, it was the point, but yeah. I, don't, I 
like him. <laughs> okay, that's I, I did think out of, out of all of his schemes that he was doing to try to help Vanya like really realize her power, when he he paid dudes to beat him up, I was Ugh. like, whoa, that was I was like that was a little extreme, guy. <laughs> Works though. Yeah, well, absolutely, it worked. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was like, oh, that was pretty extreme. And then his comeuppance, I was, I was like, that was, that was, that was quality comeuppance. <laughs> yeah, spoilers, yeah. Bonnie kills him with a bunch of knives. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to give that part away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't just a bunch of knives, it was like a tornado of debris hitting him as well. <laughs> good, I enjoyed that part a yeah, lot. it was pretty good. Because uh, she figures out he's lying to her. <laughs> he was mad. She was a little mad. Because <laughs> it's after a bunch of reveals where she finds out everything's a lie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, like you said, there was the mom, uh, Jordan Claire Robbins was her name. Yeah, she's and good. So she was a robot built by Hargraves, and we see this montage where Vanya as a child is just injuring slash murdering all of her, her nannies yeah. <laughs> until he builds a robot nanny who can stand up to the punishment of being thrown really across the room. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ouch, harsh there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's basically kind of like showing that Vanya wasn't a nice child with her powers. <laughs> no, yeah. I guess we should get into her powers. Sure. So talk about other people's powers, I guess we can talk about hers. Vanya can change sound waves into energy strikes. Yeah, probably into basically yeah some sort of destructive force or uh, energy, yeah beams and waves. Waves <laughs> and, and yeah. And eventually into a beam, a focused beam. <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. So, and her power is, is so she re- realizes that she can harness not only outside it, external sounds but the sound of her own heart. Yeah. To like fuel her power and which was great. That was a great scene, yeah. yeah. I was just like, oh no, they're all screwed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um which is further in, but yeah, like so her power it, it grows as she realizes she has this power because she's been suppressing it for so long. The boyfriend character steals her, her medication. Yeah. So she dumps it down the drain. Dumps it down the drain, so she's not on it anymore. And she's like, Oh, I've been taking it since I was a kid for my nerves. Turns out it's to suppress her powers. <laughs> yep. Yeah. When she switches from good Vanya to bad Vanya, let's say, is evil Vanya. She's got the white contacts in. <laughs> Wait, not evil Vanya, just mad Vanya. Sure, mad Vanya, let's say. <laughs> yeah, just like, you know what, screw you world, I'm doing my own thing, Vanya. <laughs> yeah. She, okay, when she's headed to the, to go play her violin. Yeah. The, she looks so cool with her, like, hair just down yeah. and, like, the, the button-up shirt with the tie and the white. I, I got it down here as I really like her vamp look. <laughs> yeah. Because she's wearing, yeah, like, a black tie, first chair, violinist outfit, and then yeah. she has her black hair with the white contacts, and she's, yeah. she's a little extra pale. <laughs> I like cosplay with that. Yeah, no, I was like, it's a great outfit. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> but yeah, she's, uh, she's just like, screw it world, I'm gonna do my own thing. I actually wonder if we did see people cosplay as that. that. Cause I, I vaguely remember seeing mm. someone walk around with a vi- violin case. Oh. So I wonder if there is uh, someone at Fan Expo. It's possible. It's quite possible. I've seen a good Klaus cosplay yeah, I saw a on picture of one, yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Um, so basically the idea is Leonard is like wants to use her to get revenge on the rest of the family. Correct. Got it. But then he doesn't realize that, I guess, doing that and using her in that way is going to cause some sort of apocalypse. Yes. So five, so they, they do all sorts of investigation to find this out. They figure it out. They figure it out. He, they, that was kind of an interesting thing, is I didn't expect, because he basically tells Luther, he's like, we got to kill these four people, <laughs> if possible. And yeah. Luther's like, no, there's got to be another way. And he's like, okay, maybe I can do a thing. So he gets back in touch with the commission, which is a time-traveling agency that correct the timeline so certain events always happen mm-hmm. and they want this apocalypse to happen and the handler's like okay we'll erase your record you come join back with us as management not as a bounty killer and he's like yep but he of course is like just doing that to find out more information which yeah. I was like oh that was cool mm-hmm. I was kind of like what he's just going back that doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> but he's going back to find out more information about the impending apocalypse and he figures out that this guy is important to it. Mm-hmm. Which was one thing you're talking about the effects. That montage they show of him when he's like old with the rifle, and then they show like stock news footage behind him, and it's all in like sepia tone or grayish. Yeah. I didn't like that. I thought it was just so cheaply and weirdly oh, executed. That, that I was, was like cheesy. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what is this? <laughs> um, 
I had a thought. Oh, sorry. It went away. I was rambling too much. <laughs> oh, no, just like on a side note. Okay. I want to go back to Leonard for a second. Okay. His conversation with Vanya in the bathtub mm. is so creepy. Yes, very. <laughs> because if anybody talks to you like that, that's abuse. I was about to say, yeah, as soon as when he's talking, I was like, what is he doing? Yeah. But it's like, uh, it's 100% abusive yeah, uh, dialogue right here. So gross. Which again, I guess is the point. He was. I know it was, but yeah, yeah just yeah, yeah. like on a side note, I wanted to point that out. That was that was the that was the creepiest scene for me. It was quite creepy. Yeah, she's covered in blood. Yeah, in the bath, and in he's the like bath. sponging her off, and yeah, she's yeah. traumatized. Yes. <laughs> okay. Which I guess again, testament to his acting and her acting. And her acting, <laughs> yeah. She looks traumatized. <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah. The director's like, "We're gonna get you to kill a real person." <laughs> <laughs> so really, really I'm gonna go movie. really full Kubrick here. We're gonna, you're gonna stab this baby <laughs> <laughs> to choke the life out of a kitten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now sit in this bathtub. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was a, that was an intense scene. Yeah. A lot of like the, her scenes in the later uh, episodes were quite intense. Oh fuck yeah! yeah. But that one stood out. Sorry. Mm-hmm. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so five. Finds out, and then when he's gone, we get this one episode, which I believe was episode the day that never happened. The day that never happened, and then the day that ne- that the day that was was the follow up episode, and uh, those two episodes were crazy to me. Anyway, I didn't like them. <laughs> I didn't like the day that never happened. Yeah, no. It what was it was it was kind of just an interesting study and just like oh they actually just like can interact well and everything but then you throw in the chaos of five back in their life and, and it's then just they, oh, wiped yeah. out <laughs> i felt like the day that never happened was filler mm. that's how it felt i was annoyed by that me. part about it because i was yeah. like you just wasted an episode <laughs> yeah like there's 10 episodes we want to know about all these characters yeah why are you... Wasting our time. Why are you wasting our time? But I assume that's in the comic, of course, as well, and it shows... Maybe. It did show one rule about their time travel, of course, that because I thought that he would have to time travel back to, like, the end of that day and then try to, like, re- reunite everybody. Yeah. But it was like, no, he just went back into the morning of it and just... That's true. Yeah. Um, uh, what was particularly annoying about that scene was the dancing between Luther and Alice. It was Figured. so stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, why is that in there? Yeah. That's like... <laughs> That's like Xena Warrior Princess <laughs> season four level of filler. <laughs> you do know that this is a side note. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before. I don't know. There's one episode of Xena that was made from a cut up pilot that never aired. Oh really? Yeah. And the pilot and it was starting like a pilot of Xena. No. Oh. Of a completely different show starring Selma Blair. Where she's a kid that travels back in time to, like... Uh, Xena time? <laughs> no, like, like early America, pre-colonial America, and oh. joins a tribe of women. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> so they used that. They recut it, and they had it be, like, a Xena fever dream. Right. It had nothing to do with the plot. It was one of those... It's, it's one of the weirdest episodes of Xena. It's not the weirdest. Right. But one of But it's up there. <laughs> it's up there. The weirdest one is the one where Gabriel imagines her life as a 50s mermaid. Mm. You should definitely do a top 10 list of that. <laughs> I should. <Yeah. laughs> if you haven't seen that episode, you can go watch yeah. it, by the way, because it's so fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was just, um, like you said, it was it was a lot of time spent on something that all gets wiped away, but I thought that was a neat, um, like I said, contrast of what versus when Five comes back and then their entire life gets upside down. No one gets that kind of, there was no happy-ish moments. Mm. <laughs> or like the happy-ish moments were changed yeah. at, uh, or just twisted in certain ways. And I thought that was cool, but yeah, maybe they kind of cut it down a little bit. Is that... It's the day that was. Mm-hmm. Is that one when um, Klaus and Luther go to the to grave? The grave yeah. yeah, I I kind of enjoyed that. Yeah, that was that was episode seven, I believe it was. Yeah. yeah, Klaus and Luther end up at a rave. Klaus is at this time trying to get clean, which happened in the day that never was. Yeah, because he had Diego t- tied to a chair. Yeah, and this that doesn't happen, and so he's wandering the streets trying to stay clean. Yeah, and he's like chasing drugs through the rave, which was hilarious. Yeah, that was a good scene actually. Mm-hmm. How they kind of made it look. Like he was in, in Nam. In Nam, yeah. Because yeah. he wants to get clean so he can summon Dave 
this boyfriend who died in Nam. Yeah. Um, and which happens in, of course, the day that never was. Because if it doesn't make sense to you right now, because you haven't seen it, you should have watched it. But <laughs> um, Klaus travels back to Vietnam for a year. Yeah. And then comes back the day after, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and he's torn up about it because his boyfriend dies. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a great story. And oh my god, it's tragic. And then, of course, the, uh, the major scene in that is when Klaus gets knocked out. And then he visits, he's visited by essentially God and then sees his dad. And sees his dad, yeah. yeah. That was a good scene. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was so funny when he's like, well, I'm kind of agnostic or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you'd think a guy who could talk to the dead would have some weird religious beliefs. <laughs> and then even she was just kind of like, eh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> And it was just a little girl on a bike. Right? Yeah, just a little yeah. girl on a bike with some flowers. And then, yeah, she sends him to meet his dad. And that was that was a great scene. Because like, oh, the whole yeah. time his dad's like lecturing him. And he's like, you're dead. And then you're still going on. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he tells like, Klaus after he's like, you know, one of his greatest dip- disappointments. Because his power is far greater than he thinks and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And then, you know, he tries to tell him some kind of secret. But he like wakes up like, or we don't get to hear it. Yeah. But he does reveal that he killed himself. So that his family would come back together that, to stop right. the apocalypse. And that's I was like, right. damn. Yeah. <laughs> because the, in episode two, you see some video footage. It's two or three. That looks like mom killed him. That looks like he was poisoned or, yeah, mom killed him or something yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. I want to go back to that. Sorry. Or I don't know if you want to ask. Yeah, no, go back. Go back. Rewind. With mom, because Diego has a really intense relationship. Like, he's very... And then they they think that mom might have killed him. Or killed Hargrave. And so they're like, we should deactivate her, or at least figure out what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no, we shouldn't do it. We should have a vote. They have a fight. And then Diego goes to her, and she's like, he's like, you didn't protect us. You didn't see... Because you're supposed to, she's supposed to be a bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. And then he cuts open her arm, deactivates her. But no one else either noticed, or he never mentions it. And yeah. then even they're like, oh, man, mom was deactivated in the fight. And it was like... Wait, no one saw that he did that? Like, he came back all emotionally distraught? And <laughs> it was just weird to me. I thought that was just, like, oddly executed. Yeah, I thought it was fine with it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't bug me. <laughs> so, fair enough. But yeah, Klaus at the rave of Luther. Yeah, that was, was great. It was great stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's when Diego, Allison, and Five are investigating uh, Harold. And then they figure out, oh, he was in jail for murdering his right. father. Oh, he has a cabin in the woods. Oh, he has Vanya. <laughs> Basically, yeah. all right. So they're trying to figure out, figure out a scheme, trying to rescue their their sister, or at least get him away from him because they don't know what she what he's gonna do. Because mm-hmm. I don't think at this point they know Vanya has powers yet. They do not. They do not. Uh, or Allison doesn't know. Never mind. Yeah, because she doesn't find out until she goes to the cabin. Yeah, and then she figures out why she had to hear a rumor about her. Yeah, why she had to tell her she was ordinary. Which, that was harsh. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, on on top of everything that they did, and then it was like that, and I was like, oh, no wonder. And of course, she freaks out. Yeah. Justifiably. Yeah. Fair. Fair. (laughs) But I thought she just straight up killed her. When I oh so did I yeah because yeah. uh, Allison and Vanya have a confrontation and then Allison was gonna use her power on Vanya again and then Vanya just like slashes with her bow slash energy attack and, and cuts her neck cuts her neck yeah <laughs> and she starts just bleeding and falls on the floor yeah <laughs> she looks pretty dead <laughs> she looked pretty dead even because then Luther and them get there and then she's still kind of blinking but I was yeah. like oh she's like in her death throes or whatever no monkey butler saved her it's fine she does live yeah yeah. But she can't talk now. Yeah. <laughs> ha ha. indeed. I wonder if the next six seasons are going to be about each one of them <laughs> losing their powers until Vanya's the only one with power. Well, I was going to say, as far as the comic book goes, there's only so far published two more stories. Oh, interesting. And I think there, there might be a fourth one on its way. So I don't know. You know what? He's busy. The lead singer. Sure. Uh, no, but I just mean like he might have just ended the story. I don't know because I haven't read it yet. I haven't uh, read it either. But I'm planning on it. So. My dad asked Tony to pick up the like the comics. Yeah, and he's like, we're sold out. Yeah, that's not shocking. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hi, Dad. Hello. Oh. Listening. <laughs> no. Okay, so 
after the Vanya attack. I know we've skipped some of the other, earlier stuff. Did you want to talk about the commission more? Sorry, before we skip ahead. I just liked it. Okay, you, I liked it. I thought it was weird that they were based out in the fifties. <laughs> no, I thought it was great. I thought yeah. it was the cool aesthetic choice. Yeah, I enjoyed the actress. I don't know what she's from. She looks super familiar, but I can't quite place her. Sure, I, I don't I think know she either. She might have been in Desperate Housewives or something. Mm. Um, I thought she was great. I thought her look was really cool. Like the kind of A-line black 50s dress and yeah. like when she gets her hair all white and then she has like, scarred and yeah. stuff. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> She's kind of badass, kind yeah. of mean. I yeah. liked it. That's all. Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, and then it's also positive. Like she mentioned several times how like she works for somebody higher up. Yeah. So it's like, where are these other higher up people? Like, oh, also, I really enjoy misplaced bureaucracy in fantasy mm. um, like fantasy stories yeah, yeah. so like the fact that it's just a bunch of secretaries yeah. kind of typing at their team at their typewriters yeah, yeah. Is, I just I don't know I, I think that's a really cool yeah, it's always hilarious when it's like, and then even the fact that because he, he wants to deliver a message, and then she's like, no, no, you got to give it to like the old lady yeah, to like so put it through the tube. Yeah, she can do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like for no reason. Yeah, really. it's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just extra layers upon layers. So yeah, and then that's the agency that Five worked for. For the the deal that the handler presents to Five, she's like, work for us for five years, and then after that, you can retire to like any time you want, mm-hmm. and you're free. But he breaks his contract whatever part way through yeah um to try to stop the apocalypse and then yeah like hazel and cha-cha it's 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 interesting because it sounds like they've been working for more than five years yeah like it sounds like they've just been doing it forever (laughs) right hazel uh doesn't feel like yeah he's just like he wants to unionize (laughs) yeah he's just like every time he's just like oh first you know they lower our per diem and now we're in like in a single room like (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah like i said it was just kind of a weird because you know it's supposed to be oh they're like time bounty hunters but he's just like normal guy he's like oh I need like my wrist brace it's, it's, it's good for like support and stuff like that he's not like yeah. you know intergalactic badass yeah no it's great <laughs> yeah he's just like oh I kind of feel like a donut <laughs> I also really enjoyed the like so Hazel five sends Hazel and Chacha instructions to kill each other yeah and I thought that storyline was kind of interesting how it was implied that like he was telling Hazel basically that he wanted to sit, settle down with Dolores without yeah. saying her name, but she was taking it that he wanted to settle down with her. Yes. I don't know. It was just good. No, it was. Uh, even the scene when they're in the woods and he bends over and you hear like, click, click. <laughs> and he's just like, what are you doing? He's like, tying my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure that was gun yeah. sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. And then, yeah, he, she, cha-cha sees him with Dolores and then she's like Agnes Agnes sorry yes yeah. sorry Dolores so was the mannequin it was the mannequin <laughs> sees him with Agnes and then she flips the switch and goes crazy and she's like I'm gonna kill him yeah <laughs> yeah cause basically uh, the note said yeah terminate Hazel or Chacha for extraction right yeah so they could go back to the commission but it was a lie cause it was by five <laughs> ha, 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 ha. ha 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 yeah yeah um, is there any other story elements you wanted to... Well, and then I wanted to get into some, some episode 8, 9, 10 stuff here. Okay. Yeah, well, we were talking about, like, Allison getting slashed in the throat. So I thought she just was just dead, because that's literally my note here. Yeah. <laughs> but then, so we get into episode 9, which opens up with basically Vanya killing Leonard. In Finally. An, in an intense way. And I was just like, that was intense. <laughs> like... It was yeah. it was pretty intense there, and then um, Vanya goes to the house because she's like they're my family. I still love them, and blah blah blah. And she finds out Allison's alive. She's crying and breaking down, and then Luther sleeper holds her. And I was yeah. like, No, why are you doing this? Luther, man? bad move. Because Pogo reveals to Luther that yes, Vanya has powers. Yes, she's super powerful. Wait, didn't Vanya kill Pogo? At the end of episode nine. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. never mind. Sorry, no, that's I gotta okay. Myself. I yeah, thought that's, that's why okay. he's like sleeper holding her. No, he, uh, basically when Allison wakes up and she says that it was, she writes a note that it was Vanya, and then yeah. Paul goes like, "Okay, time for the last secret here." She's ultra powerful. <laughs> She's more powerful than any of you. <laughs> yeah, basically, and so Luther sleeper holds her, puts her in this silence vault in the 
ground. Yeah. And which was an intense scene because they're all there and being like, no, we can't do this to her. Yeah, let, let's she's let her screaming. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and Luther's like, no. And I was like, no, let her out. <laughs> yeah, you guys, <laughs> just yeah. let her out. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's got all that soundproofing and it's all yeah. like spiky. Yeah. It's an intense room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would cause a normal person to start freaking out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um,. But yeah, that was good. And Allison even wants to let her out. Yeah. She's like, no, uh, I provoked her, let her out. It's yeah. bad. <laughs> and then they don't. And then they don't. And she can't hear any of that, so she just thinks that they're yeah. ignoring her. Well, or I don't know. It, it, it'd be hard to say because she's frantic at the time yeah. and stuff like that. But I don't know if she could see. Because like Klaus was on the side of letting her out, and yeah. so was Allison. I and think Diego. Diego was as well. They were all except for Luther, yeah. essentially. And Luther's like, I'm the leader. Yeah, she's like, I'm number one. <laughs> and then that's when she figured out she can use her heartbeat. Yeah. And oh yeah, she has like a flashback talk with her past self, who's like, embrace the power of the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> her past self is like, hey, yeah. dude, we should get up to some shit. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. And then she busts out of the vault. Yeah. Which was awesome. <laughs> and destroys the house. Yeah, well, and then I think uh, her busting the door down is like the end of... Nine. Of nine. Also, we find out, because uh, the commission lady comes back when Hazel and Chacha are fighting. Oh, that's right. I really enjoyed... Because that's when um, Agnes is tied Tied up, to a chair, yeah. Tied to a chair, and like... With an elaborate rope. <laughs> with an elaborate rope pulley over the jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good scene. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the commission lady shows up with Chinese food. Yes. Yeah, because she had a... <laughs> she had the... Her roof of her mouth was burned or something, so she could only have liquids for most of the show, and now she was healed, so she could have Chinese food again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking I just weird. assume they just... Yeah, she jumps around and gets whatever she wants or whatever, so... No, but that's what she says. Yeah. Yeah. It's finally healed, so she's hungry and she wants food. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> And then uh, she basically tells Hazel and Chacha, she's like, look, protect Banya. Apocalypse will happen. Hazel, you can retire anywhere you want. Yeah. Chacha, you'll get a new partner. You can keep on killing. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, okay, boss. Okay, boss. <laughs> <laughs> But then not, because Hazel's in the know. <laughs> He's like, that's not going to happen. Yeah, which I thought was such a good scene. Yeah. He's just like, the offer's not real. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? He's like, we don't have a briefcase. We're just going to get killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did like uh, how he just waited till Chasha and did her yeah. well, and then basically crashed the car so she would fly through the window. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, oh, this is where you get off. <laughs> yeah. But, so at the start of that episode, Vanya escapes from the vault, destroys the house mm-hmm. as she's going through... Kills Pogo. Kills Pogo, because she's like, did you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And he's like, to buy time for the kids to get away, he confronts her. And she, he's like, yeah, I knew. And she's insta-murder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mom dies, because she's in the house. Because she's in the house. Yeah, that was not weird, but it was also kind of like, probably going to go away. But I guess, she, you know, her whole world was there. So. Yeah. Where is she going to go? She's a robot lady. Yeah. She's a robot nanny. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, like we were saying before, she gets all <laughs> vamped up <laughs> in her black on black to yeah. go play her concert. Because she doesn't know what to do, so she just goes to play yeah. the concert. Well, and the kids, like kids, the rest of the people, they go to a bowling alley. And then they're like, what are we going to do? We, we, we can't find her. We don't know what's going on. And then they get... There's a couple of emotions. There's some scenes there. There's a cool fight scene in Bowling Alley. Yeah, and then they get attacked. Yeah. By some commission thugs. And Five is not there for it. That's right. He's distracted. He, he, yeah. By the handler. Yeah. But then... So yeah, there's a cool fight. And then they know she's at a concert. And then they go. Mm-hmm. And Vanya's concerting it up. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's all so good. It's, it's very good. <laughs> yeah. The concert scene is awesome. Yeah. Because there's more commission thugs enter. Yeah. And they're doing stuff. Although they're really bad at shooting people, apparently. Or they're just they're trying to... They're the Stormtrooper College of... That's what I was saying. I assume they're just keeping mastery. them... They're keeping them suppressed. Yeah. <laughs> they're just... You know, it's not about hitting them. They're also robots. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, that's when Klaus unleashes uh, more of his power, and you can summon Ben to the corporeal realm, and then yeah. Ben tentacle ghosts it up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they all kind of fight and etc. And but Allison was wanting to just like talk to Vanya. Yeah. Or, you know, use notes. She was like, no, let's not confront her. And then as soon as Diego and the loser try. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Vanya turns white. Yeah, Vanya goes all white and she's just absorbing more and more power. Yeah. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And. But then, so they kind of thwart her? Well, we, what happens is that, they, they, that attempt gets thwarted, there's some fighting, and then they're like, okay, look, we're gonna have to all rush her, maybe someone will get through it. Everyone's down except for Allison. Yeah. And then it just like, kind of cuts, and then they try. They all just get, like, harnessed up by her energy, and then Allison's behind her with a gun to her head. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and, you know, there was some okay acting here, because she's conflicted. She's like, hey, do I shoot my sister in the dome? <laughs> yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. And I thought this this was where I thought the show took a really clever twist. Yes. Because she shoots beside her, interrupting her power. Yeah, because the sound waves. Because the sound waves. And then her energy just gets shot into the into the sky. Into the moon. Into the moon. <laughs> the moon was important. <laughs> the moon was very important. <laughs> and then they're all like, "Oh man, we totally did it!" And then the moon starts to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "That was awesome." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they all think, "Oh, we we defeated the apocalypse." Nope. Nope. <laughs> they caused it. <laughs> they caused it, which I thought was great. It was just like, had they not done so many of their actions, and it was all a cause and effect thing that you could see from the start. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... It was good. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, that, like, the... Uh, I was surprised that the scene went on as long as it did. Oh, yeah. With, like, the moon, because, I mean, effects aren't cheap, but they're not inexpensive, or, like, you know, they're... But it looked great. Like, the moon comes apart in a big chunk, and it's yeah, just flying it to the really earth. Cool. And then pieces are already hitting, and I was like, wow, that, that's some good-looking apocalypse stuff right there. <laughs> Um, and while this is happening, Hazel goes back and shoots the commission lady in the, handler, yeah. in the face. Yeah, just straight up, like, boom. <laughs> and then him and Agnes are kind of together for their last few minutes. But did he, he got the briefcase. There was right? a briefcase. Ah, yes. And he's, so he's able to time travel away. Yes, I yeah. forgot that. Yeah. Yeah, because it shows, it shows, like, a montage of people, and, like, they get away. It shows Cha-Cha, like, on the phone trying to get away. She gets yeah. incinerated. Yeah. It shows detective guy incinerated. Yeah. It shows, like, yeah, there's a weird montage of people just getting annihilated. And I was yeah. like, it's weird. Every person you've met, dead. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and then uh, day five is like, look, we screwed up, but maybe I could time travel us back, and we could try again. <laughs> yeah. And they do. They and were, they do. Like, well, or they... they they attempt. They just they disappear. You don't know what happens. Yeah, we don't yeah. know what happens. The show, it ends. And I was like, that was a clever... I like the ending there. Yeah, it was good. It was yeah. good. So overall, you enjoyed the show. Yeah. I also... Sorry, I wanted to just go back to that ending that it was like, the less evil option was the problem option. Like, if yeah. you just shot Vanya in the head... Yeah. It probably would have been fine. Like, there would have been an explosion, but probably not a moon death explosion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we don't know. And they don't know. But can't it, tell. You can't, can't tell. tell. But I just thought that was kind of funny because it was... The Luther was always like, no, we shouldn't have to kill people, blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, no, I'm not going to kill my sister. <laughs> uh, maybe you should have killed your sister. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll get more seasons. Yeah. Um, okay. But overall, you enjoyed the show. Yeah, very much. Like I said, it got... It grew on me because of its... Characters. characters and the different takes and some of the because like I said a lot of these ideas seen this all before yeah n- knew what was going to happen but I liked the changes and the twists on some of the stuff yeah. was there anything that you did not like about the show there's something I did not like that I've mm. kind of talked to you about it already but I, I want to mention it can I go first sure I'm a little bit over I know mm. it looks cool but I'm a little bit over this trend of having pop songs over fight scenes. Yeah, I was over by episode two, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Because that's in my notes. <laughs> but they do it a lot. Yes. And it does look cool, and it makes for good YouTube clips. Yeah. But, it's, like, this isn't the only sh- piece of media that's guilty of it. Oh, sure. To go back to what we liked, Captain Marvel does it with yeah. the I'm just a girl scene. Yes. And I'm just... It was really cool... In Kung Fu Hustle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like a long time ago, and now it's, I just feel like it's been beaten to death. 
and turned up to 11, especially since Suicide Squad. Well, and I was going to say, I usually give it, forgive it, usually for, like, one. Yeah. Like, in the movie, they're under the girl scene. I was okay with it, because it was like, okay, it's fun, you know, and it's I just, like, for like the they... love fight. And in this show, in episode one, they do it with They Might Be Giants, and I was like, yeah. it kind of sets a tone, because it's like, oh, it's a weird, quirky song, but he's murdering all these people. Yeah. Cool. But then it keeps on happening and happening, and yeah, I was like, no. several times. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, I just... I just feel like it's a cheap way to convey, to get your audience hyped. Yeah, and like to just, bring the energy of the scene up. Yeah. yeah. Either you put, do a cover, like it's either a cover of a, a Leonard fast Cohen song, song <laughs> or a slow song yeah, yeah. done the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. Or it's like a quirky song, like They Might Be Giants. Yeah. Or it's a Queen song. Yeah. Because I was actually really shocked that there were the there Queen was no song. There's no Queen really, in there, yeah. There, no, there was. Which one? Episode 2 had Queen. Which what song? I can't remember now off the top of my head, but that was the one that I was like, no. No, no. no. <laughs> and like, I get it. It does sound cool. And yeah. it does invoke feelings. Yeah, and it, like, it brings like, it just, energy to the scene. And yeah. Like, there's a tempo to it because it's like music's high beat. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, Shaun of the Dead did it well with, mm. um, well, it was kind of, um, what's that word? Diagenic? When it mm. happens in the story. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they bump the the, rec- the, yeah. the jukebox, the jukebox and it's playing, it's playing. <laughs> um, Queen, Killer Queen? No. No, don't, yeah. stop don't stop me now. Don't stop me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, and they're beating, beating the zombie. Yeah, they're beating the zombie with the cool cues, and it's <laughs> yeah, really yeah. cool. Yes. Right? Same with, like, like um, I don't remember if that was in the movie or only in the trailer, but with Kung Fu Hustle, they're kind of doing that fight scene, and it's, um... I don't know, I'm not recalling. A Ramon song. I haven't seen the movie in a long time, sorry. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. it's great. Sure. That works well. Like I said, I, I like I, I think I usually forgive it the one time because then it's like kinda can yeah. set more tone for your future fights. Yeah. And kinda like, oh it was neat and you know but it, it's a trend that I'm ready to die. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, like I said, I, I usually forgive the one and then because uh, I actually did like the maybe because I found many other parts of it not as exciting. I thought the Captain Marvel just a girl one. I was like, oh, that was kind of fun. Kind of. Yeah, gave but it an I feel like they'd only used like three '90s songs that, that possible because there's yeah, yeah, right. a part they play Nirvana. Yes. I don't. Know the Nirvana she, one I did not like. I was, was like, was she no. fighting or just walking around? No, I think they were just walking around or something. Yeah, yeah I just like. I get it, but like... Hey, did it, you know that movie takes place in the 90s? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Nine Inch Nails crop top and give it away. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, fair enough. It was, like I said, that was definitely... It, it I, didn't... It was a complaint uh, for me. It didn't make me not like the show. Yes. I still really liked the show. And maybe if I hadn't watched it in very close succession it wouldn't have bothered me as much I don't know like I watched four episodes last night before recording this and every time a music song played I was like it I was getting irked or just being like okay come on like yeah give me your content (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's kind of I don't know yeah I just I think it's a little bit of a of a cheap move Mm. that's all yeah fair enough And and I can see like uh like in this, I think I want to say the scene in like the bowling alley probably had a song playing over the fight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it's like, okay, that kind of, oh yeah, because yeah, he throws the bowling ball and it hits like the record player and then a, a song starts. And I was like, like you said, it was kind of part of the story. It was like, okay, yeah. you know, and I kind of forgave that. But I thought the Queen one was way out of place. What Queen song? What? I can't what remember. What fight was it? It's in episode two when they fight in Hazel and Cha-Cha and Five in the, in the, in the department store. Oh, that was Queen, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Queen. Or that was yeah. probably Don't Stop Me Now or something. Or maybe Killer Queen or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I think it was Don't Stop Me. That seems to be the go-to. Maybe, yeah. It's pretty high, it's pretty high tempo. <laughs> it's not It's not a fat bottom girl. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, Bowie's one that they use a lot of movies. Yeah, I was going to say, but well, and <laughs> Ongoing History of Music taught me how Bowie, he sold licensing to his own stuff when he was still alive like as a bond for people and that's why his stuff started appearing more and more oh cool yeah it's this whole thing I mean he was a genius he made like a hundred million dollars on it like back in the 90s so it was like all right yeah no he was he was a genius with his with his own licensing so I assume his estate is continuing to do such things good for them (laughs) yeah I support that I just I just don't support using 
a pop song to manipulate my emotions Fair enough. in a film or sure. TV. Yeah. Unless it's very well done mm. or part of the story, I guess? Yeah, well, I would say, unfortunately, for in this show's sort of credit, they started to not only always have it on fight scenes, because that was, it was, like I said, it was by the second episode, I was, I was like, I'm out on this, yeah. don't keep doing this. But then they started to switch up where the song's taking place, and I was like, okay, uh, but it still was... And the, the it was still there. It was still a very prevalent thing. I'm not saying the songs were bad though. Like the soundtrack I mean, was great. I would listen to that soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But it was and just I like have no problem with like pop music being in movies. Yeah, it worked really well in Into the Spider Verse. Yes, it just, and it did. <laughs> yeah, when it's a specific when it's a specifically over a high energy fight scene. Yeah, it just starts to. <laughs> You know, we've Just seen it. Over, yeah. We've seen it. Yeah, we've seen it. Same uh, clockwork orange. It was <laughs> but still. It was. I don't know, man. Nothing really kind of turned me off or annoyed me, except for like that music thing. And I think I was, uh, I was annoyed that the commission was still kind of like operational. Like they, they came back after five, grenaded her, and. <laughs> I assumed that. The higher ups were all fine. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, so. Also, I like her. So. Well, that's fair. I don't mind. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. Um. I hope she comes back after a bullet in the head. Yeah. I figured she probably can. <laughs> Maybe she's one of the forty-three. But yeah. Well, and that was like I said. That was the one thing that kind of bothered me is that they never touched on the fact that there are thirty some odd other kids that probably had superpowers considering he adopted seven out of seven had superpowers uh, so I, I assume like, that they're bad guys for future episodes yeah but not all 30 of them like, or if they join up or something yeah I don't know I or just, their powers are mundane maybe one of them can like <laughs> I can type really fast <laughs> bake a perfect cupcake every time yeah I don't know, yeah, I was just kind of... Because that's what I thought, that, and then, you know, to the story's credit, it, it didn't go that direction, because I thought it would be... I thought there would be, like, a rival group that got together that were, like, we oh. never got the same opportunity, and we got, like, we grew up... We are the puller kids of yeah, the Power Corporation. <laughs> basically, and that they were going to take revenge, and I was like, okay, that's pretty cool, too. I'd be down with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it did not go that way Mm-mm. in their credit. So, but, so, like I said, yeah, like... So much of it we've seen before and stuff like that, but there were some different twists and different uh, takes. And I think the standout Klaus and number five performances were, were yeah. really propelled the show along because there was far more Klaus than I thought there was going to be. Oh, like no. when he first shows up and he's like, oh, I'm a junkie brother. And you're like, all right, I've seen that kind of character before. Yeah, but, but he was like, Yeah, he was interesting and he was in probably 90% of the screen time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to give a pass to one fight scene with music no. and that is the one where he's in the back listening to his headphones. Sure. <laughs> that's it yeah 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 that's fair um yeah I don't know Klaus number five Hazel and Commission Lady were my my standouts I really wanted to see uh, more Ellen Page as well like just being like oh she was great too. yeah she was super great so I was kind of like what's up because like I thought that's how the whole story was going to focus and it does but I thought it was going to totally twist into that like just being yeah. like she's the sister of superheroes I <laughs> so. found Allison and Luther Luther a little bit bland sure. compared to the rest of them, yeah. but there was still like a good counterbalance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's the point. And then obviously when Luther starts to kind of like break down a bit because yeah. he has like the unshattering faith and then it's, it gets just shattered and uh, that be, and then he became not more interesting, but he, his character became interesting because then it was like, oh, you got shit to deal with now, guy. Yeah. <laughs> so... It was interesting, though, as well, the level of technology, because throughout the entirety of the show, until episode, I think, 8 or 9, or I mean 9 or 10, we never get a date Mm. until they show a flashback in, like, 1993, and I was like, okay, so this is currently taking place, like, in modern time, but they have all this weird old technology as well as a future robot butler, (laughs) right? Like, Like, she has an answering machine. Vanya does, <laughs> and they don't have cell phones. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, kind of. So they're, they're yeah, so... <laughs> I think that's more to do. It, it's either one of two things. Mm-hmm. It's either that the comic was supposed to take place in the nineties, right? And they decided that they wanted a more modern look, or or they right, wanted to yeah, dress yeah. them in modern clothing, sure. so they set it now, but they kept elements. 
that had to do with story. Yeah. Or um, they're trying to capitalize on that nostalgia mm-hmm. aesthetic. Yeah, because when I was talking to somebody before I had seen it all, and then she was like, oh, yeah, like there's no real thing about the time. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's true. Literally until that one thing where they're like, the 90s. And I was like, okay. But yeah, like no one has a cell phone. <laughs> I assumed it was like within the past 15 years just mm-hmm. because of the way they were dressing. Yeah. That's, That's right. it. And we got a little bit of backstory with Hargrave. How his wife and he... He's pretty much... An, he's an alien. Yeah. So, and then he... Oh, he's an alien? I'm pretty sure that's the implication, is because he's like on a planet. I thought he could time travel. It, it could also have been that. I, assumed, I thought he was from the future. I assumed initially that he was from the future, but then I was like, wait, I think he might be an alien because then there's supposed to be an apocalypse. And I guess maybe, yeah, they re- recovered from the apocalypse and there's a second apocalypse happening. Yeah. So it's maybe it's unspecified. Yeah. But then he travels back and then he's just like coming off the boat in New York. Kind yeah, of thing. that was good. Hey? And I was like, interesting. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I guess he came back in, like, the 1910s. I thought it was, like, the 1890s or 1890s? Something. Yeah, it was, like, so a long So he would have been ago. very old. So maybe he yeah. is a alien. Yeah. Well, anyway, so he's or not a time, human. time jumped or something. Yeah, but he's, like, he's not... Do you think that all here. of them are aliens, then? Do you think... No, because I think it's implied impregnated that... Impregnated by aliens? No, I think it's implied that God created the 43. Oh. Because when Klaus uh, asked her something, she's like, she's like, well, I made you, <laughs> kind of thing. Oh, but I thought it was just a God thing. thing. Oh, possibly. Yeah. yeah. God would say that to Anita. Yeah, that's they? true. I know, I, th- I thought it was positive that, like, the God created all of them at the same time. Young Alanis Morissette. Young Alanis Morissette, yeah. <laughs> Came out, <laughs> kissed him, and then he, his head exploded. <laughs> <laughs> that was a reference to Dogma. For yeah. people who... Watch, watch Dogma. Go <laughs> watch Dogma. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's quite good. Unless you're very devout Catholic, then you might not enjoy it. Um, let's see. Like uh, I wanted to say just about the comic, we did that. Uh, this was kind of an interesting fact. It was apparently being developed initially as a movie oh. in 2011. Uh, then they shelved that idea in 2015 uh, in favor of trying to do it for a television series. And That's of course, fair. it started. Uh, it was greenlit in July 2017 to be made into the Netflix show. Cool. And the whole time I'm watching it, okay, I don't know about you. The whole time I'm watching it, I was like, where is this filmed? Because so much of it looked Vancouver, yeah. but then not. And so much of it looked like Portland or Seattle, but then not. And I was like, what is happening? So I looked it up. It was filmed in Toronto and Ontario, in Hamilton, Ontario. Because like that one scene where they meet Hazel and Cha-Cha outside the little like barn thing, I was like, that looks like the Abbotsford freaking like fruit market. Yeah. <laughs> it was freaking out my brain. <laughs> So the only reason that I didn't think it was filmed in Vancouver mm. was because nobody bought costumes yeah. for it. <laughs> That's fair. Like, nobody inquired about it or anything. Because the exterior of the concert hall looked so much like the exterior of the Orpheum. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> I was like, but the interior didn't. So I was like, okay, that's clearly not the interior yeah. of the Orpheum. But I was like, but the exterior looks exactly like it. <laughs> On a side note, bringing it back to the things I like, sure. Sabrina is filmed mm. in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. It's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fine. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. So I thought that was, like I said, I thought the movie thing was kind of interesting because I was trying to imagine it as a film. Like, yeah. how would it work as a two and a bit hour movie? Uh, um, they'd have to cut a lot. They would have to cut a lot, of I course. I think it works better as a Netflix series. Sure. But then what was interesting is, like I was saying, this was only a six issue comic. Mm-hmm. So it was like, did they expand more or was it... Probably. Or did it, did it allow them to do everything from the comics because they had four Maybe. extra episodes to play around with, right? Yeah. So it was like ideas and scenes that they were like, we could... We, we don't have to cut them because we have the time to film it all. Have you looked up what any of the characters look like in the comic? No. Uh, I've, I've seen a small little tiny picture on Wikipedia nice. and of the art style, and it looks very different, <laughs> of course. So. Yes. But yeah, like I said, I'm definitely going to check out the comic and read it. So. Yeah. I thought Hazel and Tasha were a pretty good representation. Mm. Yeah. That's all. That's all I've really seen. Oh, you, you, so you've seen them from the comic? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, they have little weird little animal heads. Oh, really? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, the animal head thing threw me off in the beginning. I was like, what is this? This is, just seems quirky for the sake of being quirky. Yeah, I liked it. But I was like, okay. And then it kind of grew on me a little. <laughs> but I just was kind of like, eh. Looked cool. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. 
All right, we should probably wrap it up because we're at an hour and 20 minutes. Sure. Unless you wanted to talk about anything else. No, I think uh, I've praised the show enough. Definitely recommend. Check it out. Yeah, I also recommend it. So you can find us everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Yay. Tom of Uselessness. We also have a website, tomofuselessness.com. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned that. Yeah. Don't try to take a photo right. I just said. <laughs> but it is indeed tomofuselessness.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's it, I think. Yeah, thanks for listening. Have a good one. Bye.